and left Cruz, the vena cable foramen, the esophageal hiatus, the aortic opening. Here are the external intercostal muscles, the scalene muscles, anterior, middle, and posterior, the internal intercostals, lastly here are the rectus abdominis, transversus abdominis, internal oblique, and external oblique muscles. Here's the left pleural cavity with the lung removed and the heart and mediastinum undisturbed. Here's the aorta, partly hidden beneath the pleura. It emerges from the left ventricle of the heart, arches over, and runs down alongside the vertebral bodies. It leaves the thorax by passing through the diaphragm and into the abdomen. To get a better look at the aorta, we'll remove the overlying pleura and part of the pericardium that surrounds the heart. We'll also remove the body of the sternum and the lower half of the manubrium. The part of the aorta that lies within the thorax is called the thoracic aorta. It's spoken of as having three parts, the ascending aorta, the arch, and the descending aorta. The aorta arises here from the left ventricle. To its left is the pulmonary trunk. To its right is the superior vena cava. The ascending aorta runs upwards with a slight curve to the left. It has no branches. The arch of the aorta makes a complete 180 degree turn. Beneath the arch of the aorta is the pulmonary trunk, dividing into the two pulmonary arteries. Here's the left one. This is the ligamentum arteriosum. Also beneath the arch are the left main bronchus and the left pulmonary veins. To the right of the arch is the lower end of the trachea. Here are the origins of these three arteries. Brachiocephalic, left common carotid, left subclavian. Here they are, emerging through the upper thoracic aperture. To see them clearly, we'll remove these veins, the right and left brachiocephalic veins, which unite to form the superior vena cava. We'll also remove the rest of the manubrium and the two first ribs from here to here. The brachiocephalic artery divides here into the right subclavian and the right common carotid arteries. Here's the left common carotid. Here's the left subclavian. The subclavian and common carotid arteries are shown in volumes 1 and 4, respectively. In this section, we'll look at one branch of the subclavian that's important in the thorax, the internal thoracic artery. To look at it, we'll put the first rib and the manubrium back in place. The subclavian artery arches over the upper surface of the first rib, passing behind the anterior scalene muscle. Before passing behind the anterior scalene, it gives off these branches, the thyrocervical, the vertebral, and this one, the internal thoracic. The internal thoracic artery runs downward and forward over the dome of the pleura and passes behind the first costal cartilage. To see where it goes, we'll look at a dissection of the anterior chest wall by itself, seen from behind. 